welcome back. Well, today's video is pretty simplified. We're going to take a look at the Cinebench R23 scores for the Mac Mini M1. Now, this one is got 16 gigs of RAM in it and the 500 um, or half a terabyte SSD. So, but we're taking a look at memory usage as well because I think that's very important to also note before the Ventura update actually hits okay um and it's apparently being released today at some point it rolls out today anyways when we'll get it i don't know but currently i am running the latest version of monterey so i want to do before and after because i am going to send a bench score and everything uh that os in this same video actually um so but uh, anyway for multi-core we scored at 78.33 okay which uh, pretty respectable. Um, and then in single core testing, we're at 1522. Also, again, pretty impressive. And then the MP ratio, uh, we're sitting at uh, 5.15. Okay. With the amount of RAM that we're using, um, out of 16 gigs, we're using 4.83 gigabytes of RAM. Now, of course, we do have Cinebench running in the background. Uh, so that's chewing up just about 387.8 megabyte to 383 megabyte. Just sitting there idle. Okay, so it's kind of one of those in and out variables, right? And of course, our activity monitor is chewing about 40.9 megabytes of RAM. All right, so we're not using a ton of RAM. Uh, and then, of course, we have our operating system, all the stuff in the background with a total usage of 4.82 gigs out of 16 gigs. Now, this is pretty good, pretty respectable. That means we still have a little over 11 gigabytes of memory left over before programs are gonna start going into the SSD using it as virtual memory, AKA swap for the millennials that call it swap. We've always called it virtual memory because that's exactly what it is, it uses your hard drive, or in this case, an SSD drive um, for extra memory to run programs because you're out of real RAM, okay? Uh, now, with SSDs, of course, you don't really notice the hit too easily, whereas back in the day when we had HDDs, yeah, you got a major hit and you knew it. Um, it was pretty sad, but at least you could do multiple things at once. It just took you forever. However, you want to stay away from the SSD being used in any way, shape, or form as swap or virtual memory um, because what happens is it does terrorize the, the unit and they are not at the technological advancement as of yet to be able to handle that sort of torture because it is extreme torture to a drive to have to be used for doing everything else that it's doing, but also now it's being used as RAM, which is going to be very slow in comparison to real RAM, okay, except in the case of SSD, it's 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 up there, but still, it's going to destroy the drive, okay, <clears throat> so you got to, if you do get stuck going into virtual, you need to actually make sure that you don't do it very often, otherwise, yeah, you're going to kill your drive if you're going into it way too much, which is why we tell people, 8 gigs of RAM is a joke, don't do it, custom order with 16 by half a terabyte for the drive side to get at least a half a terabyte minimal so and the other curious spot is going to be how much drive space am i going to lose as well so i thought why not take a quick check here as well since we've covered this stuff pretty good and let's go into get info on my main drive here and my main drive is currently uh, got 365.87 gigabytes of available space. I am currently using 131.26 gigabytes. Keep in mind, I only keep on main programs on the main drive that I actually need to have there, like Logic Pro and GarageBand and all their sound files, iMovie, QuickTime, and a few other programs, okay? So... My games and other stuff are kept on other drives, and I can launch them from there, and it's no big deal. Um, but it will be definitely interesting to see how much of this drive space I lose to Ventura. The other thing is, is 
how the Mac is now going to score. Uh, because, yeah, it's going to be a performance grabber. We've seen this in beta testing um, where it's been a performance grabber. And it's even slugged down a 14-inch uh, uh, MacBook Pro, which is definitely a steroided machine uh, in comparison to even my Mini. So, you know, and its Cinebench scores are much, much higher uh, than my Mini. So that's going to be extremely interesting. You know, I can't wait to get at that. So that concludes this segment of the video of the before and after. And remember, we are currently running Monterey. Uh, and the newest version of it. Uh, and we're going to come back and do some testing and whatnot and give you the results of the aftermath of Ventura and also let you know how some operations have maybe slowed way the heck down or maybe some things got accelerated because what happens in beta testing stays in beta testing, we hope. And um, hopefully we don't get the same pitiful results that I have seen in beta testing where it's slugged down that 14 inch because that would be very pain in the butt because yeah, I can't afford a new computer right now. So uh, anyway, we shall see. So don't go away. This is all instant for you guys. Cinebench scores are now done with Ventura. Looks like um, we've lost a few points. We were at 78.33. Now my Mac mini, remember has 16 gigabytes of RAM, eight core by eight core, blah, 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 half a terabyte SSD. So we're at 78.33, now we're at 77.62. It's a little bit of a drop. That's multi-core. Single core, we were at 15.22, we're now at 15.13. Not very much of a drop. Are we going to notice that? Likely, no. <laughs> okay, so, but it's still a drop regardless. Okay, that's something to keep in mind. It's still a drop in performance uh, on our CPU side. I suspect the graphics side is going to be exactly the same way. Whatever scores you got previous, they're definitely going to drop by however much. Okay. So, um, onward to the activity monitor. RAM usage. Well, the new OS does use almost 7 gigabytes of RAM. It's actually uh, about 1.8 gigs roughly more uh, than what we were using before under Monterey. So if you want to rewatch the beginning of the video, you can do the math and just minus that original uh, activity monitor result from what's currently up here now, which is about 6.83 gigs, okay? So either way, I stand the same as always. If you bought a Mac with 8 gigabytes of RAM, you never should have done it, okay? 16 gig is like the minimum nowadays. Now, depending on what you're doing, hey, maybe you just need a more powerful Mac that can go to even more RAM. You do have options out there after all, but if you are a base level user, you do not want to be running with 8 gigabytes of RAM because now you've only got like about 1.2 gigs left over to run programs. And I'm sorry, but if you're a Minecraft player, which is a, you know, it's a, it's a rendering hog. It's not that it's a high performance game, but it's a rendering hog, you know? a graphic hog as far as all that goes it chews a lot of ram um you're so, as soon as you fire it up well let's do this let's launch minecraft let's see how big those numbers grow before we even get to move in the game i'm sure you'll some of you'll be disgusted by this and some of you'll be going like oh those poor people with only eight gigs We're already at over 9 gigs. We haven't done nothing yet. And it doesn't matter if you run this in small screen mode or if you expand the screen to fill the desktop. It's going to use the same amount of RAM. That at least doesn't change. It's just the way the game is designed. So we're already at 9.65 gigs. 6.7 gigs. I'm, I'm not even moving. It's just setting itself up. I can still see a little rendering there going on. So, yeah, um, if you're running full-time SSD, which you will be with 8 gigs of RAM, you're screwed. You're going to burn your SSD drive up probably within a year or less because everything you do is going to be going right to the SSD for virtual memory, otherwise known as swap, okay? 
And um, that's not healthy for an SSD. They're not designed to take that kind of torture. Okay? And, um, but you know what? Hey, do whatever you want with your stuff. I don't really care. Um, but uh, I hope you got extended Apple Care coverage that'll cover it when you blow your SSD. Um, I'm pretty darn sure regular coverage does not cover that sort of thing. Um, but uh, anyways, because the majority of us, at least out there, that know our stuff, we know for darn sure SSDs, they're not advanced enough yet to handle virtual memory. It may not slow you down too easily because of the fast SSDs, but it will kill them, okay? So, and that's a fact. Anyhow, so where does that leave us going to next with this? Well, I did try out the whole webcam deal. I have an iPhone 12 mini and in FaceTime, it's like, boom, it connects. It's great. I got 4K FaceTime that I can do, which I really don't ever use FaceTime anyway, hardly ever. But at least now it's nice that I have a capable phone of doing the webcam thing. But then again, I could use my iPad or my iPhone at, with FaceTime either way. But if I just want somebody on my screen larger, sure, I guess it's handy. Um, big disappointment, though. The uh, wireless thing with the whole phone being used as a cam, webcam as they call it, will not work with QuickTime. At least not yet. Apple is going to have to do some sort of an update for that because, yeah, otherwise I'm going to start complaining even more. Because, see, I want I, I like using my DSLR, don't get me wrong, and it's 4K too, but I wouldn't mind shooting videos sitting at my bloody desk for a change and being able to do the quick time stuff which would also allow me to do other multitasking things at the same time and shooting a video for you guys right or i could get that angle that i'm really after that i can't otherwise do because it's not like i can move my computer out of the way to set up my tripod for my dslr because i want a certain angle shot and at least doing it this way i'd be able to do it but unfortunately quicktime doesn't allow that but i will have to check into facetime a little bit more in depth to see if there's any way I can just use it as a recorder, uh, as a webcam, without having to chat with anybody and without having to get that anything else in there I don't want. So I'll have to try that and see what happens either way. But uh, otherwise, I do like the feature. I've not noticed any slowdowns at all. Um, I mean, we do see there are some performance hits there with Cinebench, but nothing that's going to be noticeable, uh, period. Um, but interesting though, we did save 7.77 gigabytes of SSD space. I was chewing up 131.26 uh, with Monterey 12.6. Now that was before the 12.61 update today, uh, which also came through at the same time as um, Ventura. So I did that update first and then went to Ventura. Uh, anyways, so with Ventura, I'm only chewing up 123.49 gigabyte so that is 7.77 gigabytes of ssd that vendura has been able to free up for me which is fantastic on my internal drive i mean i thought wow a bigger os at least i was wrong about that part it wasn't going to chew more because it doesn't it actually chews less um, but it does chew a heck of a pile more ram like that's almost two gigs of ram more that Ventura is sucking up. And I did mention there would be some performance hits, although the performance hits, as far as Cinebench testing goes on synthetic testing, it's really a minor hit when you think about it. So I wouldn't even count it as much of a hit. If it dropped by like three or 400 points on each, at that point, I would be a little concerned. But, you know, a few couple of points here, and I think it was like 70 points difference on the other, who cares? It's not a big hit there. Graphical hit, like I said, I don't know. I don't have a program for testing that right now. Um, but um, And we're still waiting for a lot of the M1 stuff to be coming out um, proper. Now, the next thing I do have to test are some of my games uh, that I've wine wrapped because my wine wrapper program, known as Porting Kit, um, takes PC games and wraps them so I can play the game on the Mac. And I do have a couple here that have been done. Uh, I'll have to do some off-screen testing because otherwise it's just, it's probably going to do a big interference thing. And I kind of like to not mess up the video. But I'll let you know how that goes in another video for 
uh, running wine wrap programs because I'm going to re wine wrap Far Cry and see how that works because apparently with the porting toolkit being accelerated for Ventura we should hopefully see better wraps go on and maybe I can do Far Cry 1 on here again with some decent graphics um, we'll see what happens but I'm honestly not that concerned that's why I bought a gaming laptop so I don't have to care if my Mac can run a lot of games or not um, but uh, anyway so that's what I got for you. Take it as you will, judge as you please, according to your thoughts on this one. But if you bought a Mac with only 8 gigabytes of RAM in it, you made a big mistake. Um, and I would definitely try and correct that mistake by uh, getting rid of what you do have and custom ordering yourself what you are going to need. And right now, the way I look at it, at least for the next foreseeable, probably... Well, for basic level people that are also going to be smart enough to only run one program at a time, um, I think you'd be fine with 16 gigs of RAM for quite a while. I've had zero issues with iMovie, zero with Logic Pro, as well as GarageBand for doing audio video stuff. I also have Ableton Live, which I still got to take a bite into that program myself yet and do some things. I do play Minecraft, and as you saw, it does chew up a lot of RAM. Because uh, your RAM doesn't get released to you just because you fire up a game. Your system is still always taking whatever RAM it takes just to stay at the desktop level. And that's a lot of RAM suckage. Um, but um, your browsers, they chew up RAM. You know that. So you start opening up a pile of tabs. Ching, 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 ching. Start counting them up and fire up your activity monitor. And you'll see how much your browsers really chew. But uh, anyhow, my, I think 16 gigs of RAM is where you need to be at for a base level user. I am no base level user by any means, but for what I do for my stuff, um, I'm okay with 16 gigs for probably at least another two years. And then I'm going to have to upgrade my Mac to a Mac that can go to higher than 16 gigs. Because remember, the first M1s like your, your Mini, your MacBook Air, your MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, and the iMac, they maxed out at 16 gigs. We didn't see any improvements in the M1s until the 14 and 16 inch laptops, as well as the new Studio um, series machines. Okay, now they're they're fine. Now, as far as you Intel people go with Ventura, um, you know you'll know if it'll run or not because you'll just not get an update. Um, and if you do get an update, just be aware, you know um, that this is what's going to happen. Now, at least with Intel users, you guys may be able to go backwards if you don't like Ventura, but you're only going to go backwards so far because Big Sur is already in the stage of um, going right into security updates only now that Ventura has finally been released. Uh, that's where Big Sur is going to hit. Monterey is going to have a bit more support for a little while. Then it'll go into security update phase in preparation for the next big operating system from Apple. Which, let's hope it doesn't happen for a while, other than updates, obviously. Now, remember, too, if you are into the M1, M2 processors and whatever comes forward, once you upgrade your OS, there's no going backwards. Even in the same Monterey OS, go to the original Monterey 12 and just do one update. You'll never use that USB boot disk again, <laughs> okay? Uh, because it overwrites a chip inside and it locks the system to prevent it from going backwards, right? Uh, Intel users, though, you may have that advantage over us where you could go back, but there's also not that many Macs that actually made the list in Intel machines that are able are going to be able to run uh, Ventura. So, um, but uh, and those that did make it, how long are they going to make it for? That's the thing. Um, but also keep in mind that if you're an Intel Mac user. There will be features available in the M series processors uh, for features that will not work on your Intel Mac. So if you want those little goodies, guess what? You're buying a new Mac. But anyway, that's it. That's all I got for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video and comparison and whatnot. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.